but I'll be handling the upland game portion of this, and then uh, Russell will be handling the, the fur bear portion and the uh, migratory upland game birds. Um, there's a couple of ways we could go about doing this. We could do it, um, I kind of broke it down three different ways. We could go species by species and, and hunt by hunt, or I could just go through and highlight the major changes from, from past season and bag limit changes, or I could just go through the entire document until questions are, ra are raised. So whatever serves the pleasure of the commission, I'm open to. How have, we, uh, how have we done it in the past? Have we done it uh, species by species or? Yeah. So basically like quota setting and. That usually makes for an easier motion if we go species by species. Okay, let's do that because I know that we have uh, some specific comments from cabs. Uh, on some of these items, and so we can. Uh, what we'll do is we'll do it species by species, and then take into account cab comment. Uh, we may have to kind of get them up here and, and uh, kind of do it that way, but that's probably the best way. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, so we'll start out with the uh, the youth hunts. Um, we're not recommending any changes from prior hunts. Um, those hunts will occur the last Saturday and Sunday of September. Uh, the youth chucker and Hungarian partridge season, uh, we have a daily bag limit of six, possession limit of 12. Uh, for the youth California and gambles quail season, uh, same, same season structure, daily bag limit of 10, uh, possession limit of 20, and the youth rabbit season would also be the same with the uh, last Saturday and Sunday of September and the daily limit of 10, possession limit of, of 20. And uh, I'll stop there before we go on so we can discuss that. Okay, um, any uh, questions from the commission on the youth, chucker, and Hungarian partridge seasons, uh, California gamble, quail seasons, and youth rabbit seasons? Okay, seeing none. Um, I'll go ahead and take any public comment, cap comment on those seasons. Okay, seeing none, I'll go ahead and bring it back to the commission. Uh, uh, looking for a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept the youth chucker and Hungary, Hungarian partridge season, the youth California and gamble quail season, and the youth rabbit season as presented by the department. Second. Okay, I have a motion to second. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Okay, next is the uh, greater sage grouse season. I'll go through and highlight the major changes. Uh, the first is that we uh, close the Eureka County portion of Unit 068 uh, due to lower population numbers and uh, mining activity in the area. We added units 153 and 156 as closed units in Lander County due to the, uh, the unit changes there. Um, and then also we separated out Humboldt County and recommended a 10-day season rather than the 15-day season as recommended in, in other open units throughout other counties. Uh, and the reason we did, we've done that, um, uh, we're following the Western Associational uh, Fish and Wildlife Agency guidelines which suggest that no more than 10 percent of the estimated fall population be harvested in a given year and we've been anywhere from 9 to 12 percent so uh, last year was 12 percent so we thought we'd less uh, reduce that season uh, length and and hopefully get below that that 10 percent estimated fall population level so those were the major changes for for sage grouse across the state Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and ask the commission if they have any questions on the sage grass uh, seasons. And that includes the Sheldon, um, so it's all four uh, that we have here? Yeah, the Sheldon, we didn't change anything. Okay. No um, basically there. remains as is with 75 permits for each one of the seasons. Okay. Uh, Commissioner McNinch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Sean, on the, uh, the Sheldon, 
that's that's to gather information. It, hasn't there been a stipulation under the special regs that they're required to, to submit information on them? Yeah, we do. We do collect the wings there. Uh, it's been uh, you normally the Fish and Wildlife Service collects the wings and actually provides them to us. Um, that's never been noted in the special regs. I never. Well, I think it's it's generally noted for sage grouse as a as a species. Okay. I just thought it was noted specifically in there in the past, but maybe maybe not. Commissioner Reed. Thank you. The I had a question that a couple people had asked me about this Eureka County issue, the 068, why that had been eliminated. Uh, mining activity much increased in that area, and you said the population is down some? It's basically that Mary's Mountain unit from I-80 North. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's that portion of Unit 068 in Eureka County. Um, and, and there has been uh, additional mining exploration activity in there. Um, Mar Mary's Mountain itself could be, could be mined in the very near future. Uh, and there's only two known, three known active leks on Mary's Mountain. Um, they've had reduced numbers of birds on them. Um, there are some leks between I-80 and Humboldt River. Uh, they're around Immigrant Pass, mm -hmm. and uh, that's, of course, been subject to uh, quite a bit of wildfire in there over the years. And mainly as perennial grass, there is quite a bit of cheat grass in there, but it's uh, um, definitely lacking in the sagebrush component in there. And is there much hunting up in there? And I understand it's most of the hunters from for that portion of the county are Carlin, maybe even Elko um, people, because it's much closer. I mean, do you get any, is there wing barrels still up there? They used to be. Um, do you get any data? Or is it then? I'll ask Ken to Substantiate that. Yeah, uh, Ken Gray, Eastern Region Supervisor, Department of Wildlife. In, a, in addition to the mining activity you talked about, and we also burned probably two thirds of Mary's Mountain this last year in, in the Chucker Fire. And, and it is the, the remaining sage grouse habitat that exists up there is right above the town of Carlin. Uh, there's a lot of activity that goes on up there. there, there the, the water uh, is extremely limited. And it is an area that's being encroached by, uh, by continually by the mine. So we just, we thought it was an easy one to do um, based on all the impacts that are going on up there. So those are, those are the th primary reasons why we recommended that to be closed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any additional comment from the commission? Okay, seeing none, I know that um, I believe your Eureka County had some comments on uh, on sage grouse. Uh, do you want to come on up and? For the record, I'm Jim Evans, a chairman Eureka Cab. Uh, I emailed this to you. I didn't know I was going to be able to make it here today, but I've got my uh, information that I e emailed to you folks a couple days ago. Um, I'm providing you with our recommendations relative to the 2012 sage grouse and blue grouse seasons for Eureka County, uh, management units 141 through 145. Presently, we are experiencing measurable drought impacts due to our record dry winter. And as a direct result, many of our perennial springs and reaches have either completely dried up or are in the process. Uh, my observations of brood counts in management units 141 through 145 in the last two to three weeks indicate relatively low numbers for this time of the year. The majority of the broods that I have seen in the riparian areas average two to three chicks, more predominantly the two chick count. As you folks are very much so aware, <clears throat> these numbers will dwindle as the summer and early fall season progresses. Our board is recommending reducing the sage grouse season from two weeks to one week with no change in the bag limit. Additionally, we are recommending that the opening day for blue grouse coincide with sage grouse on the 25th of September and that the blue grouse season close on the 4th of November, which is a Sunday. Personally, uh, as an avid hunter and recreationist, this will be my 50th year in the field in Area 14. I am a native. And I can say without question that these are the driest conditions that we have experienced. 
since probably 1960 or 65. And we appreciate any efforts on your part and the department to support our initiative to proactively reduce harvest impacts during this extremely dry year. And uh, folks, it's really dry out there. Uh, there are a number of permittees out on, on, the, on public lands at this point in time that have started hauling water as uh, two, three, four weeks ago. And uh, it's, it's tough out there. I'm doing, I'm doing myself uh, a lot of work in, in un units 141 through 145 with spring and seep inventory uh, evaluation. And the majority of the units or the majority of the perennial uh, reaches and springs that I evaluated last year as compared to this year, there's about a 30% decline in production. So it's very significant and uh, the brood counts appear to be down and uh, I think we should take a proactive approach and, and uh, reduce our season just a little bit. I think it would be good for our bird populations. So that's all I've got for comments, but that's where we're at today. Okay. Uh, we'll have to remember the blue grouse uh, season dates. We may have to have you come back up and say that one again. But sure. uh, anyway, okay, thank you. You bet. Any additional cabs uh, on uh, sage grouse? Mission. I'm yeah. Matt Murray, Vice Chair for Elko, and uh, our motion went through to shorten that season as well for the sage grouse to one week rather than the two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any additional caps? Okay, one more. Uh, for the record, Michael Gerard, Humboldt County. We voted to uh, accept the sage grouse for Humboldt County as recommended by Endow. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. It's a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, yeah. Any like additional? Return. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, come on up. Yes. Yeah, this is public comment. Yeah, for the record, John Carpenter, and I'd just like to go on record to uh, support what Matt Murray said. I think it's time to uh, just put this to one week in Elko County because Elko County is in just as bad a shape as the rest of the world, so uh, I think you should uh, reduce it down to uh, one week and see what happens. Okay. Any additional uh, public comment? Okay, um, John, do you want to go ahead and maybe uh, respond to these comments and, uh, and um, you know, you know, maybe address the question of, you know, if we're going to do it for one, or should we do it for all? I mean, what is, uh, what is the feeling of the department on, on this issue of shortening the season? Uh, well, just to bring it back, um, and, and I'll just talk about some of the, the biological data here. Um, in, in Eureka County, um, of course, we've had this transmission line study going on there for, for several years in a row now. And since 2003, um, UNR has banded 852 male sage grouse. Um, of those, uh, only 30 have been actually shot by hunters, so about 3.5%. Um, so they thought that maybe, you know, people weren't turning in bands. Um, subsequent to that, well, kind of during that same time frame, they, they have radio marked 312 females uh, during that sim same time frame. And uh, during that time frame, uh, only nine of those 312 birds were shot. Um, so again, they were wondering what in the heck was happening to these birds. Um, so from 2008-2010, UNR monitor uh, 134 radio mark females during the fall uh, to determine, you know, if, if if they were missing some of these birds. And actually, some of the the grad students were actually trying to go out and uh, and 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 hunt for these birds themselves and see if they could harvest any of them. And again, they they were at that right around that that two percent harvest level um, so uh, just looking at your Eure Eureka County and where the majority of harvest comes from uh, is going to be that 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 three bar Roberts Creek Cortez mountain area and at least what we're what we're seeing from harvest it, it's having very light impact 
uh, on the birds in that particular area, especially when you have such an intensive study, you would generally feel that we would be shooting more marked birds, but that's, that's not the case. Um, now taking the argument back to uh, Elko County, um, if we look at our, our wing data, we collect, um, last year we collected 377 wings from Elko County, um, which, I mean, compared to Humboldt County, I think they collected 426 wings in Humboldt County alone. So the major majority of harvest seems to be people going to Humboldt County, predominantly the Montana mountains, to shoot their sage grouse. We're seeing very light harvest uh, in Elko County, particularly in places uh, uh, east of Highway 93, um, well, including the O'Neill Basin, which is one of our bigger sage grouse populations. We only collected 73 wings from the O'Neill Basin. The Snake Mountains PMU, we only collected 11, and then the Gallier PMU, which is in the northeast corner of the state, we only collected 15, so harvest is already pretty light uh, relatively to Elko, for Elko County. If we look at the population estimates for Elko County and then uh, compare it to harvest estimates, we're about 4% of the uh, adult fall population, which is the lowest harvest rate of any county. Um, so I'll just leave you with those, those facts to consider. Um, one question I have is, is, do you have any data on, on how many people hunt in the beginning of the season versus the, you know, if it is a two-week season, I mean, is, there, is it predominantly the most pressure in the first uh, week? And, uh, I would say predominantly it's, it's mostly that, that first week and that first weekend. Um, after that, things drop off, but we don't have any way to specifically measure that. Okay. Any additional comment uh, from the Commissioner Moore? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, if I understand you right, when you when you collect those wing barrels, you just do it one time at the at, after the season is over, or you don't check those on a routine basis or, or how, how do you guys do that? Yeah, it, it's checked throughout the season if I'm not mistaken on average twice. Yeah. <clears throat> does that give you maybe Ken, does that give you any type of a, an indication whether you collect more wings during a, the first week or than you do in the second week or, or how does that usually come out? What we see, and this is anecdotal, this is just basic, based on, uh, is we, we do get a, we get that first week influx, and then and then it drops off, and then and then deer hunting, uh, where we have that overlap, we we get a second a second um, peak in, in that time. So it's it, it seems to be almost equal between those two up in Elko County in the areas that are deer hunted, but those are just like the the main parts in area six and area seven that we see that maybe Harrison Pass country. So I think there is two peaks. <laughs> Any uh, additional questions, comments on sage grouse? Okay. Uh, well, um, I guess we've got some recommendations by the CABS to shorten the season. It uh, doesn't seem like biologically there's uh, the, the harvest rates seem to be very, very low. And so I don't know if it And with two peaks, you're, you know, I guess, does it do anything, is there any impact on your sample sizes for analyzing, you know, the data at the end of the season if you, if you end up cutting the season in half? Uh, well, there, there certainly potentially could be. Um, and, you know, for some of these units already uh, where we only collect, if we're collecting less than 50 wings, we're not getting good data out of it, really, to determine you know, sex ratios and production rates. Um, at, the, at those levels, it's pretty tough to detect. We need a larger sample size to be confident in that. Okay. You ready? Um, any other questions before we do that, before we have a motion? Any other questions on Sage Grouse? Okay, I think that's it. I move to... Uh, Accept the uh, 
department's recommendations for the sage grouse season, with the exception of uh, Eureka, Humboldt, and Elko counties, the uh, season dates to be uh, October 2nd through October 9th. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Commissioner Rob? I won't be supporting that motion. The uh, only thing keeping us in the game right now on the sage grouse issue is data. We start chipping into our data. We compromise our position, and I'm not going to put us in any position to compromise where we're at going forward. So uh, we just heard Sean say that our take in those areas is small. Not just small, but really light. And the number of wings he has now could compromise the data. We need to make sure that we are harvesting birds in those areas. And I'd encourage hunters to go into those areas and harvest birds. So I won't be uh, supporting that motion. Okay. Uh, Commissioner McNinch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, and it, it's always tough because, I, you know, it's, um, I mean, obviously we talk about the sage grass stuff all the time, but I know that. The department watches the waffle guidelines, um, which are based not just on what's happening in Nevada, but range wide. And um, I, I've seen the adjustments made um, uh, on and off with the closed seasons, opening seasons, and uh, manipulating the recommendations over time. And I, um, you know, we don't know where it's all headed eventually, but I, I tend to, I tend to agree that wing data, um, you know. Although there might not be enough uh, to, to have st uh, statistical um, inferences in all cases, it's certainly important, and, and uh, I struggle with it um, because it, you know you never know for um, you know I have to rely on on the fact that we've got some guidelines out there. The department's got a ton of information, and, and uh, you know my, I'm going to tend to support the department the department's recommendations with the uh, you know with. Although I'm a little cautious about it, I, I, I just because we don't know, but uh, I tend to tend to agree with the department's regs. Commissioner Moy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the problem that I have with with the motion uh, is that it seems that that the department, in certain instances, uh, as an example of the 068, where where the the uh, the harvest level was getting to from 9 to 12 percent. That would be something that, that we should look at. And uh, the, the numbers that, that the figures that, that Sean gave us was in that 2 to 4 percent range that we're harvesting anyway. And, and another issue that uh, that I have problems with is uh, the county advisory boards, they, they said shorten from two weeks to one week. And uh, they didn't specify which week to take out. And from from what personally I have seen is that the week of uh, the week in October that was proposed in, in Commissioner Powell's motion was the second week, which corresponds with the deer season stuff. And uh, outside of compromising our, our wing barrel data. Uh, I think there's, we get an influx of, of hunters that take advantage of, of uh, sage grouse in conjunction with the deer season. And so uh, with those with those things in mind, that's why I have a little bit of a problem with that motion. Okay, Commissioner Wallace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I agree with everything the other commissioners have said, but I also, um, when we look at Humboldt County, unless I misunderstood, Humboldt County didn't recommend changing theirs at all, and, and neither did the department. Just another reason I, I, I can't support that motion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rain? You know, I was, Eureka County did recommend season dates, and they were for September 25th to October 2nd, right from the notes that they had sent us. And therefore, Four, you know, if I was looking at season dates and I had to pick one as a compromise, we got a nice box here that says Humboldt County units, September 25th through October 4th, already existing there. 
that moving the Eureka and Elko County into that category would be a reasonable compromise and would make and would simplify things from you'd have would you would eliminate a separate category and include it in an existing category and would not change the humble county recommendation therefore but you know either way these counties i know have had extensive discussions with their biologists and their constituents and there are some sound reasoning behind their recommendations okay any further comment well, the, the reason I picked the second week is uh, my own personal preference is to hunt when it's cooler and it's better for me and my dog. So that's why I picked the second week, but it, uh, I won't be hunting up there anyway, so it don't really matter to me, but I figured everybody likes to hunt when it's cooler. I, I know I do, and I know my dog does. Okay. Okay, any uh, further comment then? Um, Would you like for me to amend the, the motion? Or let somebody else make a motion? Obviously, we're not going to pass this one, so. Okay, well. Um, I'll just okay. withdraw it. Okay. Then we don't have to bother voting. Okay. Are you withdrawing your motion? I withdraw the motion. Okay. Okay, now I'm looking for a new motion. Are you going to the get second the withdraw? withdraw sir. Oh, got to withdraw the second. Roll the second. Okay, we got the second withdrawal. Okay, um, for a new motion. I'll try it. Okay. <laughs> fail. Uh, move to approve recommendation sage grouse as suggested by apartment with the exception of moving Eureka and Elk counties into the same grouping with Humboldt County September 25th to October 4th. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on that, that particular? Uh, Commissioner Rob? For the same reason discussed in the last one, I'm not going to go along with that motion. I think we need the data, so I won't be supporting that motion. Okay, no additional comment. Um, okay, well then uh, I've got a motion uh, in a second. Um, there being no further discussion, I'll go ahead and call for a vote. Uh, all in favor say aye. Oh, now we're done. We've, we've had public comment. We brought it back to the commission. Uh, hmm? uh, the procedure that has been on this commission since, uh, since I have been on this commission has been the same process we use in every single thing. We have given public comment. We've gotten all the comment from the cabs. It's come back to the commission. We're voting. Staff, staff's different. We, we, we need staff input you know, to make our decisions. Um, I have a motion and a second. Uh, I'll go ahead and call for the vote. All in favor of the vote, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Okay, so what do we have? 4-4. Four, 4-4, four. Four, four, tie. Okay. Motion fails. Okay, well, so, so with that in mind then, uh, Sean, with the, the data and the information that you have um, relevant to the Eureka and, and uh, Elko counties, you made the, the comment that most of the most of the hunting occurs on the first weekend. Uh, what is the? This looks like it covers a couple two weekend period instead of three. Is that? Yeah, that's correct, and and th that's one of the reasons you see just a set date, September twenty fifth. Um, not only does it kind of standardize the season, but it opens generally on a weekday. Now, you have you know, some mining constituents and, and possibly some people working in the gaming industry that get those days off, potentially. But the large segment of the hunting population normally doesn't hunt on a Tuesday or Wednesday to go sage grouse hunting. So that actually is another. It's a set date. It's been a set right. date. Right. So, so from the 25th to the 4th is a. Thursday. It incorporates one weekend. So, I'm just trying to get a feel for what days we're dealing with here because we we uh, that's kind of where I'm headed a little bit is to, you know I, I had the impression that it might have been from one weekend to to the end of another beginning of one weekend to the end of another, 
but it's a, it's a midweek opening and an end of the week closing, so it incorporates one weekend. Um, yeah, that'd be the, a Tuesday through a Thursday. So you could kind of look at that as another method to yeah. potentially it, reduce harvest to a it, degree. You know, and we, you know, to be honest with you, with that in mind, um, you know, I'm not I'm not overly concerned with the. It, it's a balancing act of the data. To me, that that's a real important component of this thing. I. I um, you know, but I, but at the same time, you know, I don't necessarily feel obligated to adjust it so that we're hitting three weekends either. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I, I guess as long as, as long as the, the opening dates are going to provide the opportunity to at least bring in, you know, a, a consistent data set of some kind, then I'm okay with it. Um, what I struggle with is I understand what Elko County, Eureka County are saying. They're, they're talking about the conditions. I don't want to ignore that. But I'm talking about the situation we're in right now. And with the numbers of wings you're getting and the harvest rate that you're currently harvesting, I think we need the data. I, that, that's what I'm pushing for. The, the counties that need the data the most are the two that seem to be pushing against us. and. I mean, we're trying to help out mining energy, everything up in these counties, and, and we need the data to help them out. So that's, that's where I'm at. And, and just a quick comment on, on that, Commissioner Rob, is that uh, if we don't get that, that data, then it becomes very difficult, if not impossible, for us to estimate that fall population. We can't bring in recruitment. We can't bring in sex ratios from the wing data. So that leaves that possibility kind of hanging out in the wind even more than it already is. And, and science is our only salvation at this point on this. So, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Walsh. Um, Sean, what, what were the harvest rates again? I have it for the Elko County, but what was it for Eureka? What is the, what is the calendar um, this week? What does the calendar look like on this week? So, I, I tend to go with that the UNR work that's been going on out there since you know they have the most intensive work out there. So if we just look at the female segment, uh, they had a, a total of 312 marked females, of which nine were were shot over that that 2008-2010 time frame. So that's a 2.8 percent harvest rate on the females. And then since 2003, they've banded 852 male sage grouse, of which only 30 of those have been shot. So that's 3.5% uh, of the, uh, the total marked birds. And that's Eureka. That's Eureka County. And what was Elko again? Elko County, as a, sure. a countywide, we estimate that harvest is right around 4.1%. And your aim again was less than 10? Less than 10. One option would be to um, potentially compromise on the season length uh, and go, uh, because if we go to October 7th, we're going to pick up the weekend. That's. Which, yeah, which. Because the, the 9th is Monday and. You know, the, the additional two days will be Monday and Tuesday. So that's another, I just throw that out. I mean, our harvest rates are low. Um, you know, uh, we've got our waffle guidelines, and, you know, I think that we're all, we all share the same concerns with the folks that have come forward and, and uh, you know, with Eureka and Elko and express concern with the birds. Um, we've got a pretty significant power line study going on, like you said. You know, there's a lot of information being gathered in Eureka. Um, you know, we're, we are we are very closely following the waffle guidelines. Those things have been um, hammered on so significantly over the years. Um, how long have they been working on those and fine-tuning them and refining them for 12? Well, they've been out there since 2000. Yeah, and um, and I can tell you that there was a pretty significant discussions that occurred prior to that. So. Um, you know, I, I'm, the department's been very um, 
very careful with uh, each and every section. I mean, you know, looking at hunt units, it's not a function of looking at counties. It's a function of hunt units. Um, population, I mean, taking all these things in consideration, and we're seeing the, the closures coming through if the numbers aren't quite matching up. Um, right. My tendency is, is back to the recommendations of the department. I, that's just kind of where I'm feeling. I, you know, um, they're very, very car carefully thought out, these, these and, I, and I just, that's where I'm at right now. Commissioner Rob, you ready for a motion? Yep. I make a motion that we take department recommendations on all the sage grouse hunts, including the shell one. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any additional comments? Discussion? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Moore. Thank you. Uh, I guess I'm probably the one that's been on the fence on this one because I, the reason I, I, I supported the second motion and not the first motion that we tried was to uh, try to come up with some kind of a compromise on this commission to take into account the input that we got from the county advisory boards. And uh, I think those are, those are important recommendations to follow. Uh, however, rather than keep us gridlocked here, I, I think that that with the with the figures that the department has given us, I'm not sure that, that the total impact to the sage grouse is going to be different either way, and so that's why I, I can go ahead and support this this motion. Okay. Any, uh, any additional comments, Commissioner Rain? You know, the advisory boards. I think they've looked over this issue. I know I was reading some of the notes. It was extensive discussions. Okay. Got to be paying attention. Thank you. Okay. And I, I hate in ignoring the advisory boards because I know there's some thought process went behind it, but uh, uh, I think we need the data, and that's that's my main thing is the data right now. And the two counties that have a differing opinion with us right now are the ones that we really, need, really, really, really need the data in. And so uh, that's that's why I'm going the direction I am. And uh, just for my, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to support the motion as well. And uh, and basically what I'm seeing is not only the data, but uh, also I see no no biological effect for, you know, for this, uh, you know, for these season dates. Uh, uh, that seems to be my, uh, uh, you know, my uh, position. Uh, Commissioner Wallace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, I feel the same way. That's why I asked the question again to clarify in my head the, the harvest that we're getting. And if we're, if we're under the 10 percent, I mean, at three and a half, if you take the high side, three and a half and 4.1 in each of those counties, we're well under guidelines. And to me, the data for the future is very important. And uh, if we cut it down, we don't have a number on the table right now, but I mean, if you cut it down in half of that and you get down in the one, two percent, your, your data is nil. There's like nothing there. Okay. Uh, any additional comments, then? Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll go, go ahead and call for the vote. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, motion passed 5-3. Okay, continue. Uh, next is uh, blue and, and rough grouse. And really, there's no changes that uh, we recommended there. The only thing that we've uh, asked for is uh, we've added rough grouse uh, in terms of a species that we're looking for information for. So any person that uh, harvests rough grouse, we've requested that they also bring us their wings if possible. And um, there's some potential genetic work we can do there. Uh, we've also identified that uh, Nevada has both dusky and, and sooty grouse. Uh, so we've, we're going to line that out in the regulations brochure next season. Okay, um, bring back the commission. Any uh, questions on the uh, blue grouse, blue and rough grouse um, for close season? Bag limits. Yeah, Commissioner Rain. As long as we never ever separate the dusky from the sooty under blue grouse, <laughs> man, you gotta look at them <laughs> up close, figure that one out. That's interesting. 
Okay. I, I've actually never seen the one. I've only seen the other one, but I've seen pictures. And wow, you got to look at that hard. We need to keep them in the same season. Okay. I'll trust you on that one. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other comments, Commission? Okay, I'll take it out to the public. Any uh, questions from the public, uh, Cavs, uh, with respect to the blue and rough grass proposed seasons and bag limits? Uh, for the record, Michael Gerard, Humboldt County. Uh, we opted to accept the department's recommendations for blue and rough grouse for Humboldt County. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Jim, welcome up. Uh, for the record, Jim Evans, Chair Eureka Cab. We recommended delaying the startup on blue grouse to the 25th of uh, September in order to coincide with the, the uh, sage grouse opener and also our intent was to provide um, or to uh, minimize harvest during the early part of the season. The birds are going to be locked up on water very tight. We don't have very many blue grouse in Eureka County. The blue grouse populations in Eureka County are limited to basically three major watersheds. There's not that many grouse there and everybody in Eureka knows where they're at. Um, that's why we went with this recommendation and then closing that on the 4th of November. So we are in a little bit different situation certainly as compared to White Pine County where uh, obviously they have some fairly sizable blue grouse populations in the Shell Creeks and then of course in the Rubies. So that, that was our, uh, our primary concern. Basically the water scenario the same at uh, mid and upper elevation, uh, major impacts and uh, these birds aren't going to be very hard to find come September 1, I can guarantee you. So that, that, well, that's... Give, uh, give us the rep recommendation date on the dates again. Uh, September, 25th. September 25th through November 4th. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the opportunity okay. to comment on that one. Thank you. Any additional uh, public or cap comment? <coughs> Matt Murray, Elko County. We uh, voted to accept the department's recommendations on the blue grouse and rough grouse season. Okay. I'll have to admit I didn't look at White Pine County's uh, 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 recommendations. Uh, does anybody know what those are? They didn't have a meaning. Okay. Any additional public or cap comment? Okay, I'll bring it back to the commission. Any, uh, um, actually, uh, Sean, do you have a, a comment with regard to the uh, Eureka County recommendation of um, what the impact is on on this, uh, you know, this you know hunting is on this particular uh, uh, resource? Uh, well, the unfortunate thing is, is because of all the attention paid to greater sage grouse, we barely get to do anything other than anecdotal brood surveys for, uh, for blue grouse, which is unfortunate because I think that uh, we're missing some opportunities there and I do think they're an important species, but um, I, I don't have any biological argument against what, uh, what Eureka County is proposing. Okay. Okay, I'll bring it back to the commission then. Any uh, comments uh, from the commission? Live Commissioner Rain. Well, I think You're Eureka County, so more of a it's almost more of a question for um, Mr. Evans on this subject, and that was, you know, the the part about as I missed that meeting, I was off, I was out out of the state, but I understood all the part about why you'd want to start it late. That makes perfect sense. I didn't grasp the why we're closing it early. Do you elucidate on what that was, Mr. Evans? You had a chance there. Well, you know the why you closed early or started late. That's perfectly clear. The other, for the record, Jim Evans again, Eureka Cab. Uh, our basic concern was uh, we're starting to see more blue grouse hunters. Uh, we've got a population of hunters that's increasing. I would say measurably because of the fact that we have so much mining activity in, in Eureka County. Uh, the majority of the folks that are moving into Eureka County associated with mining. A lot of those people are hunters. And our, our bluegrass habitats are, are, becoming, are, are becoming discovered. 
and uh, that was our concern. Uh, typically, uh, bluegrass hunters uh, uh, would favor the early season hunt because they're they're easier to find. But uh, uh, certainly, a number of hunters, in, at least in Eureka County, are now moving into the late October, uh, November window to hunt basically upland game. And again, we do have more hunters on board at this point in time as compared to uh, 10 or 12 or 15 years ago. Pretty substantial increase uh, from the standpoint of uh, hunter and, and uh, recreational use in Eureka County. That was our primary concern. Even though I can't say that we're going to have a real significant effect if we hunt them in November, but I do know that we have more hunters at this point in time. So that was our, that was our contention. Okay, um, uh, Commissioner Wallace. Is, is this something that we could do as Eureka County only? Break huh? them out of this? Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I hate to shorten the season by two months, almost three months for the rest of the state. Right, yeah, I, that's my problem. How does that work uh, on your uh, from f enforcement? Mm -hmm. well, I don't think it would have much impact there. It, it, it does you know, place some difficulty on the sportsman. Um, and I don't, I don't know if that September 25th and November 4th is the right structure, but maybe you just relegate it to, to one month, potentially, just to make it easy for, for sportsmen to figure out in an already somewhat complicated world. So you're saying, oh, Maybe October 1 to October 31? Potentially. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Meeklinch. Yeah, and I, I don't, I mean, there's always the concern about the, uh, you know, splitting things out and getting pretty fine, but uh, we certainly do it with, um, with, you know, with our sage grouse. I mean, we've got a very complicated scheme there, and, uh, and I know that we've done that. Um, you know, north and south with our waterfowl dates and stuff because of the weather. So it really is a function of the, the you know, the folks that are going to uh, go out and hunt that, you know, they really do have to be on their toes with this stuff. And it's probably nothing new to them. Um, you know, and if we do standardize it a little more, you know, with uh, a month, it probably, you know, maybe we'd get some data that might alleviate some of the concerns for the next go around anyway. Um, yeah, I, I guess from my standpoint, uh, you know, with no biological data and, uh, and we have a recommendation from the cab that is, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, does have some, uh, support. Uh, in other words, he, he's given his rationale and I, you know, uh, you know, these are the guys that are uh, out there and, uh, you know, so I don't, I don't want to ignore that, this particular instance, uh, but. I guess maybe a question to Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans, if we did simplify it by going October 1 to October 31, is that close enough? Uh, uh, yeah, that I, I think the window that I looked at, the reason I brought into uh, the, the frame 11-4, because that ended on the weekend, I believe. That was where I was starting. It ended on Sunday. It's September 12th, uh, 25th, the start of a weekend? That's a Tuesday. That's a Tuesday. Sage grouse. Sage grouse. Why don't we think our hunters can figure this out? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm looking for a motion then, I guess. No, may it? Sure. Recommend, recommend, and let's see, we only went over blue grouse. Okay. Recommend we have the sage we approve the blue and ruffed grouse seasons as stated by the department with the exception of taking the recommendation of September 25th to November 4th for Eureka County only. Second. Motion second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Wow. November 4th. Okay, next we have uh, Himalayan snowcock. Uh, we're not recommending 
really any changes there. Uh, the season dates would remain the same, September 1st through November 30th. Okay, uh, any questions uh, from the commission on snow call? Okay, seeing none, I'll go ahead and take it out to the uh, to the public and the cabs. Any uh, questions on Snowcock? Okay. I'll bring it back. Um, look for a motion. Mo move to approve the uh, Snowcock seasons as pre presented by the department. Second. Okay, motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, next we have, uh, and I'll uh, combine these uh, several species here, chucker and Hungarian partridge, uh, California gambles and mountain quail. Uh, no changes there, second Saturday in October through first Sunday in February, as has been the case for the past five years. Uh, possession or daily limit on chucker of six, possession limit of 18, uh, daily limit on quail of 10 and possession limit of, of 20. Okay, uh, bring it back to the commission. Any uh, questions on the trucker and Hungarian partridge and the California gambles and mountain quails uh, proposed seasons and possession limits? Okay, seeing none, uh, take it out to the public. Any, uh, Public comment on, or cap comment on the uh, Chucker, Hungarian Partridge, California Gamble and Mountain Quail seasons. Come on up. Uh, for the record, Paul Dixon, Clark Cab. Uh, we had one of our board members and was pretty passionate. When you look at all the other um, upland game bird seasons, except for these two, they have hard dates. They have you know, physical dates. They don't look for Saturdays or Sundays or other things. They just have dates that are, you know, the season runs from date X to date Y. His recommendation was is that for these, that we get away from the second Saturday, first Sunday type of thing, and we set it up. And that way, for some years, you're going to have the season start or end midweek. And for some hunters that have the opportunity, it will give them a light field hunt. But setting hard dates, you know, kind of rotates through where if you set it on the weekends, you really always have a crush that first weekend when, when you set it up that way. And if it happens that the date falls on a weekend in future years, that's fine. But when you set it up every year to be hard weekend beginning and end, you have a lot of crunch in the field, a lot of uh, pressure. So he was thinking to set hard dates like every one of the other seasons. As far as for what the dates are, um, we recommended um, October um, 15th, I think, let me put my glasses on, I apologize. Uh, October 15th to February 1st. The reason for February 1st is in ending and, and our end was is we kind of kept the season length roughly what it was, but we ended a little bit earlier um, to accommodate the fact that we have late season chucker and trapper issues that sometimes occur and they, trappers kind of like that last little bit in February. I talked a little bit to Joel and Joel says, well, don't get the chucker hunters mad at us, please. But I think the point is, is that the dates that we came up with are totally flexible, but our point was to set hard dates and, and you guys can put over what you want for those dates, but that was our recommendations. Thanks. Okay. Any additional uh, comments from the cabs or public? Come on up. Uh, for the record, Michael Gerard, Humboldt County. Uh, we voted to have chucker, Hungarian, Hungarian partridge, and quail, all subspecies, end on January 31st. And our reason being is because that's been historically what it used to be. And then if you get a heavy snow year, it you can harvest more birds in the snow, puts more pressure on them. And then it also gives the trappers one month of chucker-free chucker hunter free problem and then uh, we also kicked around an idea to have it because it's so dry this year to have it start later because the birds are going to be humped up on the water and people are going to hammer them but we didn't entertain a motion with that so, but we would like to see it in on January 31st thank you Since we're talking for you, Marshall, oh. you're going to say something. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't anticipated speaking on this, but 
Um, if you recall, uh, we shortened the bobcat season up a couple of years ago into uh, before the end of February. And the chucker season actually slopped over and got increased into the month of February. And it, the result was we ended up with one week where we could go in where the chucker, the heavy chucker hunter areas are. We, we try and avoid those areas for obvious reasons, you know, the, the dog issues and whatnot. Um, you know, it'd be nice to have two, three weeks or, or even the month to, because there are places we just don't go, you know, because of the obvious potential conflicts. But just so you understand that as we start talking about bobcat seasons, is, you know, we did have a problem for those two years when we shortened the season up. So, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Jim? Jim Janay, Lyon County Cab. Um, I know where Paul's coming from. I've sat on these boards for numerous years, and we have gone through this date-specific, weekend-specific bit so many times. And this last time we went around, and uh, it's been, what, four years ago when we came out. Our cab discusses it quite frequently because uh, we get people come in. And, you know, you just can't keep going back every time. We get tired of talking about the same thing. Uh, I think whatever, we finally went ahead and went with the uh, commission they wanted, or not the commission, but NDOW, they wanted date specific. We finally got through and we're starting to get most of the people to go along with it. I hate to see you guys start considering going back the other way. So, thanks. Judy Karen, for the record, um, from past serving on the County Advisory Board and hearing from the public, um, bird hunting is really an introduction for families to introduce the young kids to this opportunity out there. A lot of them don't have the opportunity or with our limited resources with big games. It is a big deal with kids to participate in opening day. That was a lot of discussion to keep bird season on the weekends, um, that the family has the opportunity to go together and enjoy opening day. And I recommend keeping it on a Saturday opener for family opportunity. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Come on up, Joe. Joe Krim speaking for myself. In the, I like the idea of ending the chucker season on at the end of January. There are a lot of chucker, hunter, bird hunter, trapper conflicts, and I'd like to see those lessened as much as we could. So I would like to see that that chucker season end at the end of January. That's a good date. Okay. Just for dates this year, January 31st is a Thursday. The first Sunday is the third. We're talking three different. Three days difference. In Two days probably. next year. Two days next year. Yeah. Okay. Finish with public Any additional uh, public comment? Okay. Well, the commission already started discussing it, so go ahead. Thank you. You, you know, uh, Jim hit it right on the head. This has gone. Uh, the time that I served on uh, prior to this go around, um, it was it was back and forth all the time. Has there been any major issues the last few years? Um, it sure does seem to be settled down. Um, I haven't heard any complaints myself, but um, not like I've been tied in at, at that level. Um, but certainly, it's, if there has to be a discussion, it just seems like um, the, the, the TAC committee can handle it at some point. You know, oh, you hey. can really vet it out. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's not busy enough. That's why I brought. But but I, I guess the point is is that it's convenient when you can when you handle it for one year, when you can set your dates until the next year where there's a conflict with another season that got moved, and then you're right back to square one. So even when you have set dates, those everybody wants to fiddle and fart with those dates because you because it conflicts with something else that they have as a personal preference. And um, I don't know. To, to me, the way that it's set up seems to make sense. And I you know I understand. I, I know the. The conflicts and I, I, I get all that, um, but you know the, the the conflict with the trapping and pretty soon it's the deer hunt and the starting dates for this and the starting dates for that and 
we mess with sage grouse well some people say you know you shouldn't be hunting them both because there's too much pressure on them and um, I, I don't know I, I like I like the I like kind of how it's set up now myself Mr. Roth. Before Judy got up with her comment, I was thinking along that same line. Uh, it is a family outing to go chucker hunting, more so than most. Uh, just in my family, we were blanked on deer tags this year. I have two young boys, neither one of them qualify for the youth chucker hunt anymore. I look forward to the opportunity to get those two boys in the field with me and enjoy opening day. I think that's what hunting should be about, not about who gets a head start on who. Uh, I believe in family, and that's what my decision is going to be based on. And just just to get clarification from you, then then that means that the uh, last Sunday in February, uh, also being a weekend, uh, if we go to the 31st, it's going to cut that last weekend off, and that opportunity for families to hunt on that weekend. And since there's only a two three day, the next two years which is the two two year cycle that we're talking about here uh there's only a you know two to three day difference uh on this january 31st proposal and so uh i still think it gives uh the trappers uh the bulk of uh bulk of february because uh, their season goes to the end of february so um, um I just get, can you give me some clarification on where you stand on the end uh, yeah, I on the end full weekends front and back okay got it Okay, um, any further discussion from the commission? Okay. okay. The, 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 the three second version. You know, in a perfect world, we'd have everything season specific dates just because that way we're universal with everything else we've got, but I'm not worried about this. Thank you. So let's leave it the way it is. Okay. I'm looking for a motion. I make a motion to, for the chucker and Hungarian partridge. And the California Gambles and Mountain Quail Seasons to, to be as submitted by the department. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, uh, call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, next we have uh, Pheasant. Uh, no changes recommended there really either uh, November 1st opener through November 30th so a one month season length uh, open statewide okay bring back the Commission any uh, discussion with regard to pheasant seeing none take it out to the County Advisory Boards and the public any uh, discussion on pheasant season dates and bag limits <coughs> Okay, so now I'll bring it back to the commission. Looking for motion. Moved first pheasant season as presented by the department. Second. Have a motion and second. Any additional discussion? Seeing none. Call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Hearing none. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, cottontail, pygmy, pygmy and white-tailed jackrabbits. Uh, no changes there either. Uh, statewide second Saturday in October through February 28th as it has been for um, a very long time now okay bring back the Commission any uh, comments discussion seeing none any uh, comments public comment cabs seeing none bring it back to Commission looking for a motion move to approve departments recommendations for cottontail pygmy and white-tailed rabbits Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we need a break. Hmm? Now we need a break. Okay, let's do, do a break. I'm, I'm, I need, I imagine others are as well.